Traffic sucks. It not only causes us stress and makes us late, it also turns us into rage monsters. Before I moved, it would sometimes take me two hours to drive 18 miles to work. No podcast in the world can take the edge off that beast of a commute, except maybe ours. Coming soon? So, how do we fix traffic? Let's find out. Humans aren't perfect drivers. I mean, I am. I drive a Mustang. But the rest of humanity isn't. Most traffic-related problems are caused by drivers not following the rules of the road, whether that means speeding, not signaling, or tailgating. Additionally, our transit infrastructure is designed to function properly when drivers are following traffic laws. So when even a small percentage of people decide to drive erratically, the whole system breaks down. Some countries are more or less prone to different types of traffic jams because driving behavior is different in different countries. For instance, whenever multiple lanes merge into a single lane, things slow down. There's no way around it, whether it's because of an accident, construction, or a poorly timed photo shoot. It should be easy to merge from multiple lanes down to one, but us humans have a tendency to make things complicated. The zipper merge method is the most efficient way of merging when the number of lanes on the highway or road is reduced. While other countries like Germany are better at coordinating the zipper method, the US tends to view it negatively. For example, let's take a merging of two lanes into one. The most efficient way to merge would be for both lanes to have an even amount of cars in either lane that converge evenly into one at the bottleneck. What happens in the US is that people think it's rude to cut in at the last second, so they all move over to one lane as soon as they see that the lanes are converging. This leaves the second lane wide open, and a few inconsiderate people use this opportunity to shoot up in front of the line. They might seem inconsiderate, but if everyone split up between the two lanes, it wouldn't take as long. Think about it. Adding to the long list of things Americans have been resistant to is roundabouts. Common in Europe and basically everywhere but the US, they're more efficient at dealing with congestion than stop signs and stoplights because they keep everyone moving instead of stopping and starting. Despite Americans' resistance to roundabouts, they're becoming more and more common on American roads. As of 2016, Florida had the most, but Maryland had the biggest concentration of roundabouts with the average driver passing through one once every 363 intersections. When you take into account how many roundabouts the US has as a whole, you're not likely to run into one anytime soon. Unless of course you go to Utah, like me, where you find out they're everywhere. France has the highest concentration of roundabouts of any country. Stop signs may cause congestion, but more often than not, it's bad drivers. How many times have you been stuck on the highway in bumper to bumper traffic just crawling along? Then, out of seemingly nowhere, you and the cars around you just start driving again like nothing ever happened. There was no accident, no bottleneck, no nothing. What the heck? This is called a phantom traffic jam. Let's be honest, most of the time, drivers don't leave enough room between them and the car in front. When they get too close and have to brake hard to avoid rear-ending the other car, it starts a chain reaction. The car behind them has to break, which in turn causes the car behind them to break, creating a reverse shockwave of congestion. It may seem like you're running into traffic, but the traffic is actually running into you. The shockwave continues backwards down the highway until it eventually dissipates. Then, when the cars at the front of the pack slowly get up to speed, the jam eases and everyone gets on with their business. The buildup can be caused by one careless driver and can impact miles of highway. The solution seems simple enough. Drive the speed limit, leave enough space between you and the next car, and chill out, right? Well, it turns out that just being human puts us at a disadvantage. A Japanese physicist did an experiment a number of years ago where he had motorists drive at a constant speed on a circular track. All they had to do was maintain their speed and keep a consistent distance from the car ahead of them. And they totally failed. Small errors turned into larger ones and eventually a reverse shockwave rippled back through the cars, causing a traffic jam. But the experiment was a success, finding out exactly how traffic jams are formed through small, seemingly innocuous errors. Most of the time, these small errors go unnoticed, but sometimes they can create literal nightmares for commuters. In August of 2010, China saw the biggest traffic jam ever recorded in the history of history. The jam lasted two weeks and at one point was over 100 kilometers long. The average driver was moving a kilometer a day and some poor souls were stuck in there for five entire days. Luckily, this sort of thing doesn't happen very often. Sure, every city has congestion problems, but it doesn't take me five days to drive to work. 
Solutions to traffic problems are becoming smarter and more innovative than ever before. One of the best ways to remedy congestion we see on the road today is to invest in mass transit. I know, I'm not a huge fan of it either, but it might be our best hope. A study in Boston found that removing just 1% of personal vehicles reduced travel time by 18%. That's pretty amazing. I'd love to have less cars on the road, but at the same time, I'm unwilling to give up my car to make room for other cars on the road. And there are millions of people like me, millions of other Nolans, each revving their Mustang, waiting for other Mustangs to get out of the way for their Mustang. Damn Nolans, they ruin Nolan. Self-driving vehicles is another solution aimed at decongesting the roads. Tesla's driverless cars have been mostly successful, aside from a few unfortunate fatalities. That feels just weird to say. Self-driving technology continues to get more sophisticated and safe, but still has a long way to go before the public trusts it completely. To be fair, the public needs to trust the public first. Robots are way more level-headed than the average driver. Unless it's that dog thing that can't be tipped over scares me. Boston Dynamics, if you're watching this, make sure you know what you're doing. With self-driving cars going mainstream still years away, there are steps you can take to fight traffic today. The first is the easiest. Don't use your phone when you're driving. Not only does distracted driving account for a quarter of car crashes in the US, but for a lot of people, it slows them down. Slowing down causes that ripple effect we talked about earlier. So stop using your phone. And finally, don't drive so close to the person in front of you. It's as easy as that. We look at the things that affect you in the car world every week here on Wheelhouse. So hit that yellow subscribe button right there. Check out this awesome episode of Up to Speed right here. And check out last week's episode of Wheelhouse right here. Follow me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes, follow Donut at Donut Media. Be nice. See you next time.